Welcome back. We've spent the last couple of minutes speaking with the Senate representative for Ogun Central at the 8th Assembly. Of course, he is Senator Larry Tedjoshu, and he's still in the house with us. Thanks for staying with us. Thank you. So, Senator, let me ask you, when you decided that, you know, politics was the way to go for you, you picked the ANPP, which at the time was a northern party and wasn't too popular in the southwest as, as compared to the PDP that was the reigning party even in Ogun State at the time. Why did you make that decision? Well, I realized that um, the kind of politics I wanted to play must be the politics where I have a, a mentor, mm. someone I can learn from. Even if I don't achieve any electoral office, as I will know that I have picked a lot of knowledge about how to be a man of integrity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I realized that at that time, uh, at that time, General Mohamed Buhari was somebody I really loved his style, his lifestyle. Mm. So I decided, don't let me follow a party, let me follow some leaders. Mm. And I decided to follow Buhari. AMPP was not existing in Nigeria, in um, Southwest. Southwest, yeah. And of course, also Senator Ibukun mm, Yes, he was also a, me yeah. a mentor mm -hmm. to me. And um, I loved his own style of life too. So he was there, and I decided to follow both of them. Mm. So did, would you say you got the backing of the people, you know, seeing that it, it was as if you guys were like lone players at, at the time? Well, of course, the people saw us as jokers in the Southwest, that AMPP could not uh, achieve anything in the Southwest. So we kind of uh, championed the notion that it's not about a party, it's about the person or all the people that are introducing the politics. Mm. And I think uh, with what AMPP did in the early years in the Southwest, in Ogun State in particular, we made our mark, even though there were so many electoral malpractices, mm -hmm. we lost mm -hmm. where sh we should have won. Mm -hmm. Even if I was about to be killed during my yeah, yeah, time, I, was going to come to that. I mean, if I wasn't relevant, they wouldn't want to kill me. Mm. So it wasn't about the party. Mm. It was about the party, they wouldn't look for me to kill me because mm. I was contesting to be a senator. Mm. Mm. So I believe it was a learning curve. Mm. So, so after that death scare that you got, you know, in the early years of your politics, why didn't you make a decision to just withdraw? Like, ah, I need to save my life. Why, why did you d decide to forge on? Well, actually, I, I decided to withdraw. But I wasn't, I don't think it's worth. What, what your life? Yes, my life to do what I wanted to do because of my children and so on. And I went to tell my father that I was leaving the country for some time. Let me just and get over this period and mm -hmm. come back as a private sector person. And I said I wanted his advice. And he told me that, well, he will give me two scenarios. And after that, I should go and decide. Mm, what he wanted to do. Yes, he said, what would I prefer? Is it that when my children are much older, when I'm long gone, and then they want to talk about their father, so they will say, this is where we buried your father. After a long struggle, after he fought and did this. That is one option. Or do I prefer the option of, you see that, uh, that hole, that was where your father used to run away. <laughs> when things were boiling. Mm. That was his exit, that was how he ran away from Nigeria. Mm. I should decide which one, which legacy I want to be known for. Mm. So that was very straightforward. Mm. Meaning, I mean, I don't want to be seen as a failure. Mm. So I was the most important thing that brought me back into politics. Mm. Again, after that attempt on my life. Mm. I, I, you're probably one of the youngest in, in the Eighth Assembly as things stand, as in, do you feel any form of, you know, intimidation when you see senators who have you know, long years in the Senate, who have, you know, a long political history. Do you feel any form of intimidation? No. 
because of my profession, which is not uh, common, I believe, as far as age is concerned, my experience, my exposure, my professional qualification mm. stands me tall. And uh, we are only two medical doctors in the Senate, mm. both myself and the Senate President. Mm -hmm. So I believe a medical doctor sees both the young, mm -hmm. mm. the middle age, the old. So if you can relate with all of them, mm. you might as well mm. believe you can communicate on the same level. Mm. Mm. You chair the Committee on Health. Yes. And um, you would agree with me that there are loads and loads of problems in the Nigerian health sector. How do you think we can begin to fix some of these problems? Well, to fix these problems, we need um, people that will be sincere and people that will walk the talk. Mm. Okay, we are all talking about we want to fix the health sector. We know what to do. Are we doing it? That's the question. We don't need to go too far. All we have to do is go to countries that have succeeded. What did they do right? And let us don't reinvent the wheel. Let us just do follow their pathway. Mm. For Nigeria today, the problem is funding. No, let's talk about whether it's they, they steal the money or they don't steal it. Let us first of all provide the funds mm. first. Then the issue of uh, protecting the money could be looked at. Now, in Nigeria, I want to compare Nigeria today and Turkey. Mm. Because 20 years ago, Nigeria was like, Turkey was like Nigeria. Their health sector was in shambles. Mm. Now, in the, in the wisdom of uh, the administrators of health sector, they said, for your health sector to thrive, your budget for health must be at least 15% of your whole budget. Entire budget. Okay? Mm. I believe with that, there was also an African conference. Unfortunately, it was hosted in Abuja. Mm. I would say unfortunately because... <laughs> Abuja is the only one that did not obey that law. Mm. Now, as of today, at that conference, it was agreed. They called it Abuja Declaration in 2001. And they said 15% is the minimum that every African country must allocate for the health sector in mm. their budget. All African countries. Mm. That is an African. Mm -hmm. And then it is called Abuja Declaration. Mm. When I go to international meetings locally now, and it's called Abuja Declaration, I'm ashamed. <laughs> because it's only Abuja mm. that is not obeying the law. Mm, mm, mm. Countries that are not as rich as Nigeria, Swaziland, Burkina Faso, they are already near 15%. Nigeria is exactly being there for 4%. Ever since, 4%. 4, 4, 4 mm. Even when you have the 4%, they may not release up to 2.5%. Mm. So we have not even done the minimum that is expected. To, so. For us to start, we haven't started. Mm. And, uh, WHO has told us that for every, for one doctor, maximum 600 people, mm. for you to have good effect. Mm. Nigeria, we have one doctor for like 50,000 people. <laughs> Where mm. do we start from? Such a sad situation. So we need, uh, let's forget about even the 15% now. Mm. The National Assembly in 2014, they introduced what we call the Health Act. And in it, it states that at least 1% of the consolidated revenue fund of the country mm. must be allocated to health. That's apart from the 15%. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that 15%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That 1% now, signed by former President Jonathan in 2014, in, uh, August, up to today, that one percent we have not reflected, mm. but you see, but what Nigeria is good for is emergencies. Mm. When we had Ebola, all the money came out. Mm -hmm. The money they should have put in put the budget, into, yeah. they didn't put it. But when you have Ebola, same thing now we have meningitis. Mm -hmm. The money will come from mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Look at the northeast malnutrition. Nigeria today, 
we lose about 2,000 children every day, every day. on malnutrition. Mm. It's just like loading a 747 aircraft, seven of them with children, take off from Mutala Mohammed Airport uh, and, just and crash them. them. Every day, every day, seven aircraft. That's what is happening today. Is Why? We did not budget for nutrition. Mm -hmm. we failed In 2016, to we put only two million naira for the nutrition of the whole country. That one cannot even feed up to <laughs> uh, how many people mm -hmm. for a year? Mm -hmm. Maybe 50 people, 50 children. <laughs> so if we don't put the money, we, can, we just keep on talking mm. and talking and talking. But nutrition, Nigeria surrendered to UNICEF. UNICEF is the one taking care of our, of our uh, yeah. Giving us donation mm. every day. Mm. Because of that, we have surrendered. Mm. So from the National Assembly, we are fighting now mm. to let us do the right things. We are making noise. Mm. Let us have the proper budgeting. Mm. And have the right people to administer the money. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about brain drain in the sector. A lot of young doctors find joy in getting out of this country. Once they are out of school, the only thing they want to do is go to the US, go to the UK, go to China. Some don't even mind going to Ghana. How can we begin to get our young doctors to stay in the country and help boost the sector? The doctor that graduates today, what is he looking for? Money. Money. So, it's just like a businessman. You go to a place where you can sell your goods with maximum profit. Nigeria today has the least profit for a medical doctor. Mm. Mm. The salary structure is just not is a misnomer in this in the world society. So we have to isolate because medicine health has to do with human beings, life, their lives. You can't say the way we look at the health sector in terms of personnel is the way we look at science and technology or the way we look at uh, the petroleum sector, because everybody in the other sectors, mm. they all have their health to take care of. Without their health being in order, they cannot work in those ministries. So let us bring out health sector from the civil service. Their own salary structure must be different. Because to attract them, our medical doctors to come back to Nigeria, their salary must be at least, if not the same, near mm. what at is obtainable with, yeah, outside uh, the country. Outside, yeah. Okay, if you want the doctors to stay, let us give them the right salary. The nurses to stay, let us give them the right salary. Mm. Now let's talk about the Eighth Assembly. A, a lot of Nigeria, Nigerians seem to believe that that's like the most dramatic Senate we've had I, I, since our democracy took, took off in 1999. How do you think that the Senate can begin to win back the confidence of the people? Because it appears that right now they've lost it. Well, uh, I would say this is the real practice of democracy since we started democracy. Mm. But all that has happened is an aspect of government trying to have its freedom. The problem we're having today is just because the National Assembly decided that it wants to be independent. Mm. That is the genesis of the problem today mm. because of the independence of the National Assembly. The National Assembly wants to be the dictator of its own mission. To say this is the leader we want and that's the leader we are going to. Mm. No external influence. That is the simple reason mm. for it. So there's no struggle that person got his price. Mm. So this liberty of the National Assembly, this is the price the Assembly is paying. So lastly, tell us one thing about yourself that, that you know about yourself that most people do not know, but you would like to share. Well, that's a tough uh, <laughs> question. I don't know what they don't know. Ah, yeah, uh, okay. What they know. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say they are hope, open books, but th there has to be something that you know. Mm, maybe people a lot that of people know me know me. Mm. If you get close to me, you will know me. Mm. I don't drive anybody away from getting close to me. 
even as a politician, I've learned to keep everybody close. Mm. So, most important is I try my best to follow the book that is the manual for human beings. Mm. That is my Bible. Everything they said they should do there, I struggle to achieve it. Mm. With that, you cannot fail. Mm. 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 So, I keep on struggling. You can, nobody's perfect. I'm struggling every day. Or oh, when I, there's a problem, I go and look for that kind of problem in the Bible. Oh, is that something similar or I can compare? How do they solve it? That's the manual for human beings. I get the answer there. Mm. I pray about it. And I move on. Mm -hmm. But for you to be able to do that, you must have a relationship with God first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. Mm. All right, now we have been speaking with the senator representing Ogun Central Senatorial District in the 8th Assembly, Senator Larry Tejoshu. Of course, he's been letting us into his world and telling us things that make him thick. Thank you so much, Senator, for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. And thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can keep up with us by sending your mails to the Sunday interview at tvcnews.tv. We will be waiting to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jokeli Jadu. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.